The video was brought to you today by the people on the screen. If you'd like to be a part of them, consider going to my Patreon and becoming a patron. Every amount helps. If you'd like to get my thoughts as they come, please join my Twitter, where the Glass Enclosed Nerve Center reigns. Also, I stream three times a week uh, on Twitch, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern. Go hit it up. Thank you. Um, so something I was I had been thinking about for a, a few weeks now, uh, and it was something that was illuminated by a video by Black Red Guard. You should uh, check him out. He's very good. Um, left his content from a Maoist perspective. So it was talking about being like, what does it mean to be kind of like safe in America as a black person, right? And the kind of relationship uh, black people have, not only to just the state, but to like non-black people and specifically white people. And there's something that he said that really kind of make things click for me, right? And he said, the comment that as black people in America, we are a surplus labor, right? We are a surplus labor force. And when you think about it from like a capital, from like a, you know, a mechanistic economic way, everything that's happening now and it has probably been happening after, since after slavery, makes more sense, probably more than you would want it to, right? Like, I think oftentimes there's a... There's kind of a lack of overall context of understanding why certain things are happening. Like, we'll know the history of what's happening. And more often than not, what it's, it's probably kind of chalked up to is that, you know, this is kind of like a natural phase in human society, you could say. We're like, okay, well, you know, because of in-group, out-group thinking and, and quote-unquote tribalism, you'll have, you know, people oppressing other people until they get to a point to where they basically unlearn the ways they thought were correct were wrong and then we move towards a equitable society in many different ways i think that's how a lot of ways this is kind of thought about but i feel like what's lost in that is kind of like the original context like for example why were black people in america in the first place this seems like it's a very easy answer to to understand but it i think what people kind of like don't get they don't get the purpose they just kind of understand the the mechanics of it right we were in Africa, European ships came to Africa, took us as slaves, brought us over to North America and, and South America. And that's typically how it is. And it, we understand it, but we can't really understand why, right? And why not in just why they did it then, but why as a sort of through line up until today. So it kind of comes back to this, like, what is black people's purpose in America? It seems kind of weird. It seems almost like theological, almost like a philosophical debate, but it is very much in the realm of, I think, political, political science. So if we can understand that, you know, the, the reason why we were here in the first place was to be used as a free, free labor source, right? That, that's the whole, you know, we were forced against our will in order to, you know, make uh, Europeans a lot of money. Then we can understand after slavery ended, what did that, what did that mean, right? So we understand that for, in capitalism, when oftentimes there's a surplus of something, right? For example, surplus of a good or product. Typically, it is more economically feasible for them to destroy that product than it is to say redistribute it to give it to give them out for free, right? We understand this is something that happens all the time. That's why there's this. That's why there's this resource scarcity, which is actually, uh, you know, manufactured. You know, there's much many plenty of resources to go around, but because we live in a profits-based society. The select few control those resources and decide to go out. And if they can't make enough money off it, if they overproduce, they basically waste all of it and destroy it. So when we understand that and we apply that to a labor force, right? The example, the fact that like that sort of principle works in the same way that um, an employer and employee work, or or a, a owner and a worker figures out. Um, then we can understand that in the terms of in a racial context, right? So for original purpose, right, the, the economic purpose were for us to be a free labor source, then we got our freedom, and sort of. Um, and now we, you know, and, and the, the majority of the population isn't enslaved. Then the question becomes, what, what's the point now, 
right? What, what did they do now? And you can see this when you see a little bit after uh, slavery ended, right? There was an idea like, well, you know, push us all into Central America, right? To basically ship us out or ship us back to Africa, right? And if you notice, if you notice something like that, that's something that uh, the Nazis did to the Jews back in, uh, well, you know, 1930s Germany, right? Before the final solution, they just would like, like people, they would just kind of like ship them every, some other place. More or oftentimes they'd come back because, you know, the world was just as anti-Semitic as, uh, as Germany was at that time. And that's when they kind of came up with, we had to do something with them and ship them off into ghettos. And then eventually the final solution came off, which was the extermination. So that kind of brings us back here. So if that happened before, before the 1930s, that's what, um, you know, white Americans and in the government was trying to do with black, black Americans. What does that mean for now? What does that mean as the goal now, right? If we're, if we are, if we are a surplus labor and they can't effectively exploit us and they still exploit us, right? But like, they can't do it as effectively as they used to do. What is the purpose of what is, what, 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 what further use you could say they have for us. And if you kind of already put the pieces together here, it's none. So what do you do with the surplus in a capitalist society? You get rid of it. And that kind of puts everything together. So that's why, you know, for example, things like, well, if you have sensitivity training for police, or if you have these diversity things for the government, or like all these institutions that have been very like honed and, and trained uh, in our exploitation and extermination to, to somehow like reform them in a way that like goes against their stated purpose or their, or their fundament, the fundamental way they, they function doesn't make sense. Because the goal is never to be like the, the whole idea of, of integrating and, and, and getting to a post racial society and, and and having equity. All these all these understandings understand only only work when you can come from an assumption that the state uh, and capital are neutral when it comes to black people, right? That like that yeah, they can be racist, they can be white supremacists, but they can also be neutral and therefore reformed and therefore, you know, equitable. But when you understand this from a simple that, no, from their foundations, they were specifically designed, right, at least in part, to exploit and kill black people, then we know that fundamentally that part, even if you can change other parts of the system, can't change. Um, and what this means is that whatever goals they can, they'll claim to you, right, whatever goals the state will say they're trying to do to change and be better, the reason that can't be reformed this is because it's fundamental. It's it's a it's a it's a building block, you could say. It's as borrowing from a science term. It's a building block of the systems. One of the building blocks is anti blackness. And so we kind of come to this idea that well the only real resolution, right, the only way to resolve these contradictions would be one of two ways. One would be if you kind of already guessed this the genocide of black people, then that's what's going on right now. Or two the overthrowing of the system. So, what does that leave us, right, as black people? Understand if we can understand that the system isn't not only not built for us, but built specifically against us. There is no equity within the system. There's no equity within the society. Well, the question becomes, what do we do? And to that, there are many answers, right? There are many solutions. There are many positives. There's, you know, going to our finding, going somewhere else. There's creating an own zone for us there's kind of like breaking taking the system down brick by brick there's many different like solutions um whether or not which one works or is which one is is the correct one i don't necessarily know if that is something we can get to at this point but i do know though that the solution isn't or at least it can't be it can't be an intermingling of the system it can't be a finding the parts that work and maintaining them while removing the parts that are bad to getting you know and getting equity like if this doesn't it, it won't work that way right because if it if it could work that way it would have already happened but we don't see that you know we've seen many 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 years of it being tried with no with no real good outcomes but yeah that's kind of what we'll talk about you know hopefully get some comments discussion if you guys think Hey, what can be the solutions? Uh, comment down. I like to hear it. This is definitely more of an open discussion because, like, we can know the the problem, but find the solutions that feel a lot harder. Peace.